In this video, we're gonna use a dial indicator to measure the run out of a wheel assembly. Let's talk about why we might measure this. Vibrations in cars are very common, and there's a lot of ways that those vibrations can come about. A tire vibration is, is very common. Right? Tires go through pretty tough life, as do wheels. And so one of the common solutions when we get a vibration um, as a customer concern is that we take these wheel and tire assemblies off, we go to a tire balancing machine, we run them there, we look for balance for this assembly by itself. And a lot of the time that can fix our problem. One of the issues with that though is that the customer concern was a vibration while driving the car. If I take this off, I've now isolated the car from that, I'm only looking at one piece of the puzzle. And so measuring lateral runout on a wheel assembly like this, and even radial runout, can help me understand whether or not the wheel is bent and whether or not I have runout issues in my hub and my rotor that are causing that vibration to happen. Most wheel balancers today do a great job at looking at, do I have a wheel bend, do I have a flat spot, things like that. But there's still some great power in knowing when we get those tough jobs, those tough vibration concerns, that this is a good place to come down to to try to determine what am I really fighting. To make this measurement, we are using a snake style dial indicator that's got the vice grip attachment. I put my vice grips on the fastener for the ball joint. I picked that point because it is solid with the knuckle assembly and where the wheel hub is mounted and ultimately where the wheel and tire assembly get mounted. I wanna pick a place like that so that I avoid an opportunity for things to deflect or have movement, such as the ball joint. If I was to go to this control arm, I could introduce more movement depending on how I decide to rotate the wheel. Got my dial indicator set. I've put a white line here on the tire just so that we can see when we've passed and made a full revolution. And our setup seems to be pretty good here. I'm gonna go ahead and zero it just to make things easier to look at. I want to pay attention when I do a measurement like this that I don't have any wheel weights that are on the wheel lip right here that might contact and impact my measurement with the dial indicator. With everything set, I'm going to use the other wheel to rotate so that I'm using the transmission and transaxle to do that. Going fairly slow to make sure I don't have any chatter issues. And then we are back to our white line. One thing to pay attention to is that I was able to go through a whole rotation, come back to my white line, and my reading on my dial indicator is still zero. If I don't return to home, if I don't go back to that zero, that's a sign that something with my snake, something with my setup has an issue that I need to correct. So we went through that whole rotation. We saw roughly five thousandths of an inch worth of run out. Um, I know this because the center of my dial indicator shows that each graduation is 0 0.001 inches and I saw a travel total of five. To interpret that five thousandths as being good or bad, I would want to consult service information to see if Mitsubishi has provided a spec. As a general spec, that's quite low for a wheel assembly and so I don't see much of an issue there. Typically, if I have high run out at the flange and hub surface of this wheel assembly, it gets compounded as we get out to the lip and barrel section of the wheel, and this number would grow much larger.